Hello friends, welcome to next blog in Drag Gen AI series. This blog series is for beginners and young entrepreneurs who want to get started and build Rag based Gen AI applications. In the very first blog, I've shown you the use cases, what we are going to build in this series. And in the second blog, you see how to quickly get started with the Rag Gen AI. In our last video, we discussed the basics of data tokenizations and we also learned how to use Code Gemma and Code Llama model to generate code. You can find this video in the highlight section in my X handle, Ashoklax, and also you can find the same videos on my YouTube channel. Now, if you like this content, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and follow me at a GitHub and X account. In today's blog, we are going to continue building our RAG application. Last video, we discussed how to tokenize your data. In this video, we are going to create embeddings of that token and we are going to store those embeddings into a vector DBs so that we can run an LLM inference on it. In today's blog, we are going to only focus on open source vector databases, for example, Superbay, SQLite, or Trichroma. Please keep in mind that there are other market tools available. So for example, Pinecone is, is the market leader. There's also DBRX version and uh, PostgreSQL. They are very famous options. But we are going to use only open source technologies like you know, Facebook library called FAS. We are going to focus on Trichroma and SQLite in this example. So let's get started. Before we proceed any further, I want to reiterate, please go through this video. Otherwise, today's video is not going to make any sense. So in last video, we covered the basics of data tokenizations, and you can find the same videos on my YouTube channel as well. So we are going to continue where we left off. So let's get it started. So I'm going to open my Carson code editor here. First, let me just browse through the directory. As you can see, there are three different files I'm dealing with. Now let's go what inside those files. As you can see in chapter number three, there is a Python documentation and so it is in chapter four and five. So in last video, what we did, we created a scrap.csv file. So we have in a giant CSV file, we have three rows, one per each chapter. Now let's go visualize the token. So again, this is the recap from the last video. In last video, as you can see, chapter three has 4,216 and chapter two has approximately 8,000 and chapter three has 5,600 tokens here. So what we end up doing, because this is, a, a, is, this is not a uniform allocation of the tokens, we have to create the equal number of the tokens from the text. So we created a, another function. What it does, it takes the entire set of tokens and it distributes it and create a, an equal number. So now, as you can see, as you're seeing, there are 200, approximately 200 number of tokens um, per vector. So as you can see, initially there were only three rows and uh, there are like approximately 20,000 or whatever that number of tokens. But instead of this number of tokens, now you have got 94 rows and each has approximately 190 to 200 number of tokens. All right, so this is the number of the tokens. So we have created a document, a data frame, which has 94 rows and each rows has number of tokens. Now, what we want to do? So before you proceed and let's go, we are going to start with the Chroma DB here. First thing, as you can see, there are some issues with the previous version. So if you get some issues, uh, you know, you have to install another library called Pi SQL three uh, SQL Lite three the binary. In my case, actually, I don't think so because this issue it seems to be resolved. So I'm just going to install the pip install Chroma DB here. But I'm just telling you, in case if you see some error, please install P Pi SQL Lite uh, three binary file. Okay pip install chroma db as you can see it takes a couple of seconds 46 seconds and now i have a chroma db uh, installed on my machine so next thing what do you want to do uh, let's go you know start that so there are a couple of different ways to install a chroma db first let's say if you are experimenting with your code that means you are just like you know running some tests so in that case what you need to do you can run it under a non persistent db so again, what is meant, you are running a tested database which you want to quickly you know, experiment with. So the way to run this is import chroma db, client equals to chroma db dot, and you say client, and you just say hit enter. So you know, it's going to, now you have a client chroma db non-persistent database client you know, running on your machine. Now, if you want to have some persistent database, so obviously if you have created a database in the past and you want to put that back into the memory, you want to run it as a persistent DB. And to run that, uh, if you want to run it through command line, which is always a good idea, when you go to the production, this is the way you want to run it. So simply issue the command saying chroma run, host equals to local host, port equals to 8080. Again, you can change the host settings and local host and give the path to the vector DB you might have created in the past. 
there's a difference if you want to run it in non persistent that's the way you run it and if you want to write it as a persistent database uh, you can run it like this there are a couple of other ways you can run the same persistent database so for example you already have that ad and you do instead of using the command line you want to use the python notebook so simply there is another function so just like you had that client equals to chroma db dot client here you you call the another function saying chroma db dot persistent client and then you pass uh, the parameters of the path and settings and then and database so simply is the same code as you know um, the previous code like you know the difference is the previous code you were running into the um, uh, terminal window and here you are running it inside the python notebook now there's another way that i promise this is the last way of running you know i'm going to show it to you if you run if you want to run an http client of client of it right so the way to run it same thing chroma db dot http client and you can pass the different parameters uh, just like you know local host or your host name settings and header and the name of the database all right so there are four different ways you can start the chroma db um for experiment purpose because this is a not persistent database i don't even create so i'm just going to keep it the original setting now you can always there's another function called list function list collection so inside that database you can think about collections is a number of records so as you can see is blank now let's go create one so client dot create collection and uh, let's give it a name let's say manualify or you can give whatever name you want so manualify i'm going to get rid of that so what this command is going to do is going to create a collection uh, named manualify so now let me, if i command this and run this again now instead of seeing the blank you will see that there's one collection has already been created um, so now this that's pretty much it now what we want to do inside that collection collection think about collection is an schema sorry i said records no it's an schema of records so in that schema what i want to do i want to insert the documents the record of the documents what i've created just to recap so what we did so df was the data frame where we originally had all the text written so let's go recap that so if you see the df data text it tells you there are there are 94 different uh, rows in that pandas data frame i'm going to create a list of that and i'm going to store that into another variable called documents so again documents is a list of all those 94 rows what we have created so this uh, we have already created the collection here uh, next thing what we want to do we are going to iterate so let's go create a function which is going to iterate over these rows so first thing what do you want to do i am going to enumerate on this document so for each row in the document uh, but again you just can't store text like that so now you have to be careful about that you have to what do you have want to do here you want to take one row and create an embedding vector out of that now how do you do that simply so if you remember my last video so olalama.embeddings and here you access a model which is an embedding model here so Let's copy this model. Again, there are a variety of different models. First, first, let's go with this model. This is an embedding model. So, open another command prompt window and saying olalama list and sex. See if this model is tall or not. See, I don't have that model. So, what you can do olalama pull and give this what model name, and it's going to take a couple of seconds. And now you have an embedding model running locally on your machine. Simply, what this model does, it takes the text and it creates the embedding token settings out of that. Now, if you go to Oralama website, there are multiple other models available there. So please experiment uh, with the models of your choice. Um, there are plenty of models there. So I have no preference. Now let's go back to our notebook. Um, all right. So Oralama dot embedding. So whatever embeddings have been generated. So for each row on that particular document, I created an embedding. So now uh, an embedding is actually it's just like you know if you access the response object. So response embedding. so i'm going to take that embedding now i want to take that embedding and uh, query the collection say collection dot add and let's define the collection we have already you know uh, implemented the collection which was manually five now inside that collection simply i want to add one row at a time okay so collection dot add and let's give give it some parameter so we want to give it an id so that we can locate and the embedding and if you want to store the actual document itself so you can store it as a you know text itself all right this is an optional but you know minimum you have to store the id and embedding let's go run this i have got some error here olalama not defined so let's go import that import olalama sorry i forgot that import olalama let's go run this again all right so if everything goes there's one more error let's go see what that error is collection is not defined all right so we can say collection uh, we have already created the collection so if we run this is going to complain again that collection is already created 
because this is we are it's a non persistent db so let's go do one thing we are going to you know remove that collection so collection dot delete collection collection dot say delete delete collection and give the name of the collection which we want to delete so manually phi right i'm going to run this again so now i have no collection because i'm going to create that again now if i run this so what is going to do is going to create the collection and is going to take all of those rows and insert it at a time as you can see it may take some time for me it took approximately 3 minutes to finish and those were like you know, pretty giant files so again depending on your machine configuration it may take some time to generate embeddings and push those you know uh, embeddings into your vector database now my vector database has already been created now let's go try to access that so collection dot get collection and name of the collection what we initially gave it manually file now please be careful because you know every time you don't want to create that you you can once you have already created that and you accidentally you know, remove your create collection it may mess up so do not run this block over and over again unless you really want to insert the new um new data into that okay so that's the only condition you run this so please be careful keep this code somewhere separate so that you don't accidentally run it okay so now let's go uh, because now the collection is already created we want to get the data from the we want to read the data from the vector store and to do that is very simple so suppose this is my question i want to know okay how my arguments and keyword arguments are def defined in python so now if you want to ask that question again whatever your question is you have to create an embedding vector out of that and take that embedding vector and do that vector to vector search okay now here is you're not doing text to text search you are doing vector to vector search so first as you see i change my question into the embedding and now i am going to say collection dot query and whatever embedding i created from that uh, my question i am going to uh, access that and end result equals to one means like number of results number of uh, possible matches you want to return okay it could be one or two or whatever okay so now let's go Uh, run this so data equals to results you know if if it runs successfully as you can see it very very fast now let's go what the result is let's go see the result is as you can see so it finds the closest match of that embedding vector what you have created so as you can see you may have returned because it returns a json object so let's go try to access the first object inside that data equals to zero it still i think is a json object so let's put one more zero here all right so now if you see this exactly tells you the closest match it found in those uh, vector database what you have created this is not coming from ola llama or any other chat model this is coming from your own rag database and that's exactly what we wanted to achieve that so congratulations if you made it this far you have created a rag database and you are able to query um, you know any search string inside your rag database now you can beautify it like you know now simply if you remember last video uh, so now it's just like you know wrapping your rag answer into um cool llm english okay so just say like you know whatever the rag results i retrieve i'm going to wrap it and like you know beautify it like you know englishify it or whatever you call it so i will say you know what using this data respond to this prompt now if you run this uh, everything else the, the remains the same so i'm just going to beautify the results what i retrieve from the rag here now let's go run this again there's a problem or oh, because uh, sorry i don't have 3 3.2 let's run this again So again, like you know, it may take some time uh, because now it's like you know accessing your whole giant LLM uh, Llama 3.2 model and trying to you know wrap it. Whatever the uh, your rag uh, results are is going to you know wrap it and is going to beautify that. Is going to put it in a nicer format here. As you can see now, this is much better looking results. So that's the reason you can you can use your raw rag. Uh, results but it's always a good idea to wrap it around llm so that you can see the good results all right so that's all i wanted to cover now let's go try to the see another example saying sql light sql light is another very very you know great example here i found this just from the experiment um because a lot of people use sql light and i copied this code from their website please you know pardon me i'm not going to go through this code again but the idea is a lot of people when they are experimenting instead of working onto a giant vector database they want to quickly you know run it and see the results so in that case what you can do you can just copy paste this code again you can find this code into my github repository um or you can go to their website sql light uh, hyphen vec so simply what this code does is is doing the similar thing and this is very very helpful if you want to quickly experiment with the vector database without um wanting to do a whole giant installation here so if you run this i hope this runs correctly if not 
Uh, I think you have to install a couple of packages here. So SQLite underscore vec, vec stands for uh, vector. So let's go pip install SQLite vec. All right. So again, just to recap, this code is like I'm going to include this code into my GitHub repository so that you can experiment with it. But this is a very, very good. Like if you want to experiment, if you want to quickly, you know, create a search kind of a thing, you please go ahead and, you know, I highly recommend using SQLite. So that's all I wanted to cover in this video today. Now, similarly, there's another option from Facebook. So face, this is a kind of a newer uh, model here. Uh, it's equally good, just like Chroma DB and uh, you know uh, SQL Lite. It does a similarity search and it does a very you know awesome job. So please experiment with this. They have written the code over there and it's very very similar to SQL Lite. That's all I wanted to cover in this video today. I hope you like, like this video. So so far we have covered. I've shown you how to access rack and how to create rack. In next video we are going to work with SQL queries with functional calling. Stay tuned. Thank you.